75 million years ago, a giant pterosaur patrolled the frigid skies above what is now Canada. Diving into misty mountain valleys and river-crossed plains, it was a terror to anything small enough to fit down its gullet. This was Cryodracon Boreas, the frozen dragon of the north wind, and it was one of the largest animals to ever fly. Hailing from the late Cretaceous period, approximately 75 million years ago, this pterosaur roamed the skies of what is now modern-day Alberta, Canada, with a wingspan that stretched an astonishing 33 feet, similar to a small airplane. Like other large Ajdarkids, such as Quetzalcoatlus and Aramborgiania, it had a long, stiff neck. This long neck was instrumental in catching and consuming prey, especially while in flight. Also like other Ajdarkids, it had a very large head, with a long vertically compressed beak, and long legs and arms allowing it to be adept on the ground. Its body, though robust, was lightweight, a necessary adaptation for flight. The bones were pneumatic, meaning they were filled with air spaces. Additionally, like all archosaurs, it had air sacs throughout its body. These adaptations and the extreme which they were taken to meant that despite its large frame being similar to that of a small giraffe, the actual body of Cryodracon was not excessively heavy, probably weighing around 450 pounds. The environment that Cryodracon Boras soared above wasn't quite the frigid expanse one might envision, given its name. During the late Cretaceous period, the region now recognized as Alberta, Canada, was a temperate environment. A large inland sea cut into the continent, fed by a myriad of rivers which tunneled through dense forests filled with towering conifers, cycads, ginkgos, and some of the earliest angiosperms or flowering plants. Cryodracon would have faced minimal competition in these skies, while it's usually grouped in as one of the largest Ozdarkids with Quetzalcoatlus, Hatsigopteryx, and Aramborgiania it is somewhat different. It is slightly smaller in weight and frame than those other Ozdarkids, and also was around much earlier, while those three species were around at the same time just in different areas. The only other Ozdarkid pterosaurs known from the time are known from South America and were not nearly as large. Below, in the forests and plains, large herds of herbivorous dinosaurs roamed. Among them were the duck-billed hadrosaurs, such as Edmontosaurus and Prosaurolophus, the formidable horned ceratopsians like Styracosaurus and Centrosaurus, as well as a few species of tank-like ankylosaurs, including Euoplocephalus. These herbivores were constantly under the watchful eyes of predatory theropods. Albertosaurus, a close relative of T. rex, was the top predator in the area at the time while smaller dromaeosaurs like Sauronithalestes occupied the lower niches. The waterways were a haven for various species, from fish like the Lepidotes to semi-aquatic reptiles such as the Champsosaurus. Cryodracon, like other large Ajdarkids, is thought to have lived a lifestyle somewhat like storks, using its flight mainly for moving between areas and escaping predators. The rest of the time it would stalk around on the ground, searching for small animals and carrion. Although, make no mistake, it was very well adapted to fly, while it would not have been particularly agile in the air, it would have been able to reach 80 miles per hour and could travel great distances on wing, being able to cover whole continents or oceans. Cryodracon Boris was a relatively recent addition to the world of paleontology. Its discovery traces back to the 1970s when the first fossils were unearthed in Dinosaur Provincial Park in Alberta, Canada. However, for decades, these remains were mistakenly attributed to another pterosaur species, Quetzalcoatlus. It wasn't until 2019 that researchers, after a thorough re-examination of the bones and additional fossil evidence, recognized that they were dealing with an entirely distinct species. This led to the official naming and description of Cryodracon Boreas, with Cryodracon translating to Frozen Dragon and Boreas, referencing the North Wind, aptly capturing its northern origins. As far as we know, Cryodracon went extinct around 74 million years ago. This is probably connected to a low-level funnel turnover in North America and competition with other Asdarkids, perhaps immigrating from other continents. It's also possible that ecological pressures simply caused changes in morphology and led to them evolving into another species, likely one yet undiscovered, or possibly one of the other giants like Quetzalcoatlus.
If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you liked and subscribed, and if you have any thoughts or suggestions make sure to leave them in the comments below. Have a good day everyone!